In this video I'm going to take a closer look at uh, the hard drive and uh, hard drive controller uh, from my IBM uh, 5150 PC. So uh, let's start with the drive. So uh, this is the controller, I will put it aside for now. Uh, this is the drive, it's an uh, Seagate ST238R. Uh, let's take a look on this other side. So we have here a motor, we have a board, we have uh, various uh, connectors and jumpers and the power supply. So as usually I um, printed uh, product manual so let's take a look and see what it says uh, first of all uh, this is a product manual that covers a number of uh, Seagate drives including this ST238R so first of all we see uh, here uh, drive characteristics we see the uh, recording method, which is RLL. At this moment, uh, maybe uh, we should make a pause and uh, say a few words about this encoding method. So in um, today computers, we are used to uh, simply plugging a hard disk in the motherboard and it will work. And if we take out the hard disk from one computer and place it in another computer, it will continue to work. However, uh, back in these days, uh, this was not possible. Uh, you would have this uh, controller board, uh, which would be inserted in the motherboard, and then you would have uh, any disk uh, connected to this controller board. And uh, so if you would uh, take a disk uh, from one computer and wanted to plug it in, the, in another computer, uh, you need a similar board or at least a compatible board uh, for the controller. Uh, the controller itself uh, communicates with the disk and uh, it is aware of the uh, disk characteristics and the uh, encoding uh, specification used uh, for encoding data on the disk. So otherwise uh, it's not possible just to take a disk and move it uh, to another uh, computer. And uh, in those days uh, there were two main uh, encoding schemes, uh, MFM and RLL. Uh, RLL was uh, better uh, because it allowed uh, faster uh, speed and a uh, bit larger uh, formatted capacity compared to MFM. Um, but the controller uh, needed to be aware and uh, support this RLL. Also, uh, because uh, of the encoding scheme, uh, the disk uh, needed to be certified for RLL. So in theory, uh, you could take an RLL disk, uh, is, uh, use it with an MFM uh, controller. You would just lose uh, some space, some formatted capacity. On the other hand, if you take an MFM uh, disk and use it with an RLL controller, uh, it may not work reliably. Uh, however, this difference is not something that the disk is built differently. It's just that an uh, RLL disk is certified uh, to support the RLL encoding scheme. So if you have, let's say, a very high quality uh, MFM disk, you could potentially use it with an RLL controller. It's just something that's not certified and uh, it may cause you to lose data if uh, the disk is not uh, high enough quality. So in this case, we have 
an uh, RLL disk, uh, as you saw in the uh, product manual, and uh, also this is confirmed by this R here. And uh, the controller, we'll uh, look at it soon, is um, also an RLL controller. So from this point of view, uh, we are fine. Now, uh, the first uh, diagram that we see here is actually uh, from this other side. And it mentions there is a resistor termination pack. So this is... <coughs> the resistor termination pack and uh, we'll uh, see more about it soon it also shows us the uh, power connector is called j3 so this is the power connector uh, the larger uh, connector is called j1 okay so next to the power connector uh, then we have uh, the jumpers, called here J7, and finally the J2 connector, uh, which is this uh, smaller connector here. Okay. So now in the manual we have uh, some jumper settings. Uh, we see uh, we can uh, specify which drive this is. Um, so uh, uh, this um, will enable the drive select line, uh, which enables the controller to select and address uh, the drive. And uh, the control cable interface, this is the J1 connector, uh, may use either a daisy chain or radial configuration. We also have a manufacturing test options. It says do not install jumper. There are some more details. Um, right fault uh, signal uh, and the recovery uh, mode. So these are the uh, jumper settings that uh, are available. Uh, in this particular drive, uh, there is no jumper configured. Uh, there is uh, only this uh, jumper here, uh, which um, selects it as uh, drive one. So is this uh, jumper here uh, between pins 15 and 16, but no other option, no manufacturing test, no right fault, no recovery mode. Okay, so only this one. Uh, now there is a uh, uh, discussion here about the difference between radial and daisy chain mode. So in uh, uh, the open state, in uh, so the jumper is missing uh, between uh, pins one two. Uh, this is the configuration associated with this drive. Uh, there is a daisy chain configuration which allows connection of a maximum of two drives on a common control cable. So the control cable is the larger cable, the J1 uh, connector. Uh, but uh, a separate data cable is required for each drive. So this would be the uh, G2 connector. So uh, I have this uh, control cable. Uh, which is not for daisy chain because it allows uh, connecting only one drive and uh, but in theory for daisy chain uh, this would have uh, another one of these uh, connectors which would allow connecting a second drive on the cable on the control cable while uh, this data cable uh, each drive needs a separate uh, data cable connecting it uh, to the controller. However, it's also possible uh, to have a, a radial configuration. But first, I skipped over this paragraph. Uh, it says for the daisy chain, the last to drive in the chain, uh, physically farthest from the controller, requires termination. 
all other drives should not be terminated. So uh, this is again the resistor termination pack. So the last drive, or in this case the only drive uh, on the control cable, should have uh, this uh, placed here. If uh, there is a daisy chain configuration with the second drive and this is the first drive, then this uh, termination, this resistor termination pack uh, should be removed on the first drive. On the second drive, uh, it uh, remains here in place. Now, there is a second configuration possible called the radial configuration. Uh, to configure the drive radially, install a jumper on pins 1 and 2 uh, <coughs> of the user configuration jumper block. If you configure the drive radially, leave the resistor terminator packs installed on all drives. Uh, also, in this case, uh, each radially connected drive has its own uh, control and data cable. Drives in this configuration always remain selected. Okay, uh, so uh, I suppose this is something that needs to be supported uh, by the controller and uh, this controller uh, only has uh, one connector uh, for uh, the control cable and uh, two connectors for data. So uh, with this particular controller, uh, I don't think it's possible to set uh, this radial configuration and only use daisy chain uh, configuration. Now the manual gives uh, some instructions about drive uh, mounting. So the drive can be mounted uh, horizontally or vertically. In the case of a horizontally mounted drive, uh, in my uh, computer it is horizontally mounted, uh, it says uh, never install uh, with the PC board on the top. So uh, the correct position is like this inside the computer and uh, you should never uh, install it like this. Okay, so uh, only like this. On the other hand, uh, it's also possible to use a vertical installation. I guess this depends uh, on the computer case. Uh, and if installed uh, vertically, it's possible on either side. So it could be installed like this uh, or like this. But uh, it should never be installed like this or like this. Okay. Uh, but as I said, for a typical uh, IBM 5150 case, uh, it's installed horizontally and this is the correct installation position. Uh, with regard to the uh, recording method, it mentions here uh, that um, uh, certain drives, uh, especially those without R, are designed for operation with uh, the ST412 interface with MFM encoding at uh, 5 uh, megabits per second data transfer rate. And it uh, explicitly mentions that operation of an MFM drive with a RLL controller is not approved by Seagate and will void the drive warranty. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it doesn't mean it would uh, not work. So it doesn't say here uh, it's not going to work, but it's not approved. And uh, this is because uh, the drive uh, was not certified for RLL operation and uh, it may cause uh, the drive to lose data. So it's something that may happen, is not certain that it would happen. On the other hand, uh, those drives, including this one, ST238R, uh, so the drives ending with R, uh, are designed uh, for operation with um, 
the ST412 interface with run length limited uh, encoding at 7.5 uh, megabits per second data transfer rate. So um, again, as I mentioned, uh, there is a high data transfer rate, 7.5 <coughs> compared to 5 uh, megabits per second. And um, this uh, drive is RLL uh, certified. Now, um, drives, uh, including uh, modern ones, uh, may have uh, media defects, uh, which means uh, a media defect is a read error um, when the data, which has been correctly written, cannot be recovered within 16 uh, retries. And it mentioned here, it mentions here that a printout will be provided with each drive shipped, listing the location of any defect by head, cylinder, sector, and byte. The defect map will uh, specify the number of bytes uh, from index. Um, okay, uh, with this particular drive, I do not have uh, the printout. However, it mentions here, uh, being an uh, ST238R, uh, there will be uh, no more than 33 defects total per drive. Uh, and cylinders 0, 1 and 2 uh, will be free of defects. Okay, this is very important because uh, usually in uh, this area you would have uh, the file table or uh, the boot sector and uh, it's very important to be uh, free of defect. Uh, and uh, I also highlighted here that for different uh, drives, there is a different number of uh, defects that uh, uh, are allowed during the manufacturing process. So in this case, for this particular drive, no more than 33 uh, defects. While for this uh, drive here, for example, no more than 11 defects and so on. So this is uh, kind of important to know uh, if there are defects on the drive. Uh, also, I wanted to highlight here that uh, according to this product manual, the expected service life of uh, such a disk is five years. Now, at the end of the manual, we have a description of the pins uh, on uh, the various cables. First on the command cable. So again, this uh, larger connector, J1, this one uh, is the command uh, interface. And uh, we have this larger connector that goes uh, in the controller board here. So uh, if we look now at the descriptions, uh, we see here there's a head select signal, right gate, seek complete, uh, track zero, right fault, uh, again head select, uh, uh, this is head select two uh, index ready step drive select uh, direction. Okay, uh, so as you can see, these are all uh, control signals. Uh, on the other hand, the G2 uh, connector, so this is the smaller connector, this one, which has this uh, cable which is attached uh, to the controller either here or here depending on the drive number. Uh, this uh, second connector is for transferring data. 
So uh, we have here uh, drive selected uh, signal and then we have uh, write data. Uh, this is the same for both MFM and RLL and read data. So this is the actual data that is uh, written or read uh, from the disk. Okay, uh, so uh, the last uh, step to consider is how you install the cables. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, as you can see, there is a small cut in here, which allows you to correctly install it. But uh, and as you, uh, you can see it here, uh, this key on the connector. Uh, but uh, if for some reason your drive does not have this one, uh, you would install it with uh, this uh, red line uh, towards the power supply. And uh, this is the correct way of installing it. Uh, so now uh, the cables are installed. Uh, of course, um, we also need uh, to provide power uh, from the power supply. Um, this would be uh, just a regular uh, power connector. Okay, so let's move on uh, to the controller board. So this is uh, the controller board that I have. Uh, this is an uh, Adaptec uh, ACB2072. Uh, I have here uh, an installation guide. So um, uh, we have here a board layout. Uh, fortunately, the and there is a larger diagram. So let's take a look at this diagram and try to understand the board. So uh, we have here the uh, connector for, the, for plugging this board in the CPU board. Then we have uh, the J1 connector for the uh, control signals as we saw when we discussed the disk, the J2 and J3 connectors for data, uh, allowing to connect up to two uh, drives in a daisy chain configuration. Uh, I remind you daisy chain means we have uh, two drives connected on the same uh, control signal, control cable, and uh, individual uh, data cables uh, connected here. Um, we also have um, here it says high performance jumpers, so these jumpers here. Uh, here we have another set of jumpers uh, which is called jumper uh, selection of drive tables. It's mentioned here but we'll see it in the uh, installation manual. Um, we also have some jumpers uh, here, here, and there is something here called uh, CPU, this particular uh, chip, which is actually a microcontroller. I would, I will speak about it uh, later on. And uh, we have here the BIOS, uh, we have a date of 1987 on this particular BIOS. So uh, let's see some more information from the installation manual. Uh, first of all, uh, for the requirements, it says here uh, hardware, IBM PC, XT, uh, personal system 2, model 30 or equivalent, IBM compatible computer with uh, one floppy disk drive, 
one available system expansion slot, room for one uh, five and a quarter inch or three and a half inch uh, Winchester hard disk drive. So uh, it's easy to understand why uh, we need to have an available system expansion slot in order to uh, plug the controller board. Uh, it's easy to understand we need to have a room for the uh, actual disk being used. Uh, it's not so uh, obvious why uh, we need one floppy diskette drive. Uh, but uh, I guess this is because this installation manual assumes uh, we are installing uh, a new controller with a new disk and so we need uh, access to a floppy disk drive uh, to use the utilities provided in order to format uh, the disk. So I'm guessing this is the reason for uh, a requirement of one floppy disk drive. And uh, of course we need uh, 20 pin and 34 pin uh, flat ribbon cables to connect the drive to the controller. So this 20 pin is the data cable and this 34 pin uh, is the control cable. As I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, it also says here the controller uh, must match the drive uh, parameters like number of heads, uh, number of cylinders, step pulse rate, uh, etc. Uh, in order to function successfully. The drive parameters are divided into two categories. One being the drive changeable parameters, <clears throat> so basically the jumpers on the disk drive um, and to the controller changeable parameters uh, so this refers uh, to the jumpers uh, on the controller uh, again regarding drive selection and termination uh, the disk drives since they can be connected in a daisy chain configuration so again only daisy chain is supported by this controller, no radial configuration, just daisy chain. Uh, so the disk drives uh, have a removable uh, terminator. Uh, I showed this earlier, this uh, resistor terminator here. So this is removable. Uh, this is usually a 16 pin deep uh, resistor package. The last physical drive in the chain must have its terminator installed. In this case, uh, again, since this is uh, only uh, one drive in the system, uh, it must have this terminator installed. Uh, with regard uh, to the jumper uh, selection, uh, we see here a table with uh, the drive characteristics. Uh, these are called BIOS table 0, 1, 2, and 3. And uh, this uh, jumper selection uh, specifies here, uh, for example, BIOS uh, table for drive uh, 0. Uh, this would be uh, the first to drive, the only connected to this one. Uh, if uh, all the jumpers are removed, it selects uh, BIOS table 3, which specifies an RLL capacity, a formatted capacity of 30 megabytes. And uh, for data heads uh, with 615 uh, cylinders. Okay, and uh, if we uh, look here, uh, these are uh, the jumpers in question. Uh, you can see them in the diagram here. Uh, and as you can see for this uh, particular drive, uh, for this particular controller, uh, there is no actual jumper placed here. Uh, so uh, it uh, selects this uh, BIOS table tree here. Uh, also, uh, we have here the so-called uh, high performance uh, jumpers. Uh, so uh, uh, these are 
these jumpers again here there is nothing installed um, so they will allow specifying uh, if uh, drive 01 is uh, side quest uh, we have some reserved here um, if uh, something is installed uh, in pins KL then self-diagnostics is enabled uh, if something is installed uh, here then BIOS is disabled so uh, since there is nothing installed the BIOS is obviously enabled and it's also possible to specify an alternate uh, address uh, then uh, we also have uh, the jumpers WX and UV so uh, these jumpers near the center here uh, which uh, uh, specify the address with no jumpers uh, the address is uh, C800 so presumably uh, this would allow connecting uh, maybe multiple controllers uh, on the board so you can have uh, different uh, address for the BIOS uh, why uh, is this important for hmm, multiple reasons but uh, one of them is uh, accessing the primary uh, formatter uh, so uh, if you install a new uh, disk uh, then uh, it mentions here the disk must be formatted with the primary uh, format and this primary formatting is not supported by uh, DOS uh, however it is supported by the uh, uh, ACB2072 BIOS uh, through uh, debug and what it says is that you need to call uh, this address which is uh, in the BIOS here so it's important to know uh, at what address this is mapped the default with uh, no jumpers uh, is to be mapped at uh, C800 so in this case uh, you would make this call and this uh, will start the format program and again this is included in this bias so you can start it with debug as mentioned here this is a dos utility uh, or uh, some other way uh, as long as you call uh, this particular address and this would allow uh, performing this uh, primary format uh, of the disk Okay, uh, so um, now the only thing that remains is uh, to also connect the cables. Uh, there is here uh, next to each uh, one, so this would be uh, pin one. Uh, I hope uh, you can see it also here. Uh, this pin one uh, is uh, the one with uh, this red line so uh, you would connect it uh, like this and uh, like this okay so um, again the red line uh, aligned with uh, a specification of pin 1 and obviously uh, the board uh, goes in the CPU board uh, of the computer so that's all for today uh, thank you for watching uh, and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe thank you and see you next time bye